U.S. Vice President Mike Pence launches a blistering attack on China. Hello, I'm Anand Naidu and this is The Heat. In a wide-ranging speech, U.S. Vice President Mike Pence accused China of using a, quote, whole-of-government approach to undermine the United States. The speech comes almost three months into the Trump administration's trade war with Beijing. CGTN's Nathan King has more now from our newsroom. And Nathan, this was the most aggressive attack on China by the Trump administration, or any uh, U.S. administration for that matter, to date. Uh, what were some of the key issues raised by the vice president? Yeah, definitely uh, of the Trump administration anyway. Look, I mean, it would be easy to leave out uh, stuff. It was the whole kitchen sink. We were expecting this to be fleshing out the allegations that were given last week at the United Nations by the U.S. president on election meddling, but there was little evidence of that. Uh, but there were lots of accusations from China's actions in the South China Sea to so-called debt diplomacy in Africa, Asia and elsewhere, uh, basically uh, calling out China as spreading its influence malignly around the world. And then, of course, the economic arguments uh, where uh, Vice President Mike Pence essentially said that China's rise has led to suffering in the U.S. Let's take a listen. Over the past 17 years, China's GDP has grown ninefold. It's become the second largest economy in the world. Much of this success was driven by American investment in China. And the Chinese Communist Party has also used an arsenal of policies inconsistent with free and fair trade, including tariffs, quotas, currency manipulation, forced technology transfer, intellectual property theft, and industrial subsidies that are handed out like candy to foreign investment. These policies have built Beijing's manufacturing base at the expense of its competitors, especially the United States of America. Yeah, I mean, we've heard these arguments, of course, but when it comes to the allegations of election meddling, there really was not like, for example, with Russia and a big sort of intelligence uh, 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 dockets and different agencies basically all saying they did it. There was very thin evidence, although one piece of evidence that the U.S. president had cited before was that four-page advertisement by China Daily in the Des Moines Register in Iowa, which essentially uh, was pulling together cases against uh, the tariff. It was a paid-for uh, advertisement, clearly labelled that, obviously ruffled the president uh, and vice president Mike Pence. But, you know, I think the big takeaway from this is everyone just thought this was a trade war. This is a war on lots of fronts. Militarily, in terms of the standoff in the South China Sea, he was very pushy on that. Uh, culturally and ideologically, as well as diplomatically and economically, uh, too. Uh, it is really a full assault now on Beijing. So, Nathan, what do you make of this? Is this a political ploy, an economic strategy, or is it something else? I think it's all of it. Uh, you know, uh, we are just a couple of weeks away, a few weeks away from the midterm elections. They say all politics is local, and even glo global politics is local. Uh, the Trump administration have been very annoyed uh, that China's retaliatory tariffs have been targeting uh, congressional districts which voted heavily for Trump in the presidential election. I mean, they would target those anyway because of those where the reciprocal tariffs are uh, on goods that China imports, like soybeans. But uh, they would felt there was a political targeting uh, going on uh, as well. Uh, but remember, uh, you know, it's not just the trade deficit when you talk about uh, the economic complaints that the, this administration has. Uh, if you know from Robert Lighthizer, Peter Navarro, uh, in the administration, very much wanting to see a fundamental change uh, in China's economy as well, not just something about the trade deficit. But also, you're seeing here uh, political, diplomatic and other pressure as well, and very much the U.S. sort of signaling to allies and others uh, that you kind of have to choose between Washington and Beijing at the moment. The one silver lining I saw was that uh, Mike Pence uh, maintained the one China policy uh, very, very clearly there, um, but then criticised other nations for dumping Taipei and, and siding with the PRC.